Welcome back. Once again, adventurers, to Let's Play Blaze Blue Calamity Trigger. In the last episode, the Elver Million fought valiantly against a superior officer, Major Jin Kisaragi of the Inner World's Praetorian Guard. And we also got a glimpse into her motivations at the Military Academy, her determination to restore the glory and honor of the Vermilion family, which is unfortunately fallen on hard times. Exactly uh, what caused them to fall from grace in the eyes of the NOL has uh, yet to be revealed, but Noel has made it you know, made it her uh, mission, if you will, to actually uh, achieve this uh, seemingly impossible feat. But the cauldron has awakened, and before us stands New 13, the Murakumo unit. Huh? Th this is... We've seen this before, Noel. Anu is as unresponsive as ever. The only person in which she does react to is Ragnar the Blood Edge. Uh, who are you? And there's that what? flashback what again. That? And, uh... Yeah, time for a little bit of uh, car clarification on my part regarding that flashback, because uh, if you do, if you remember in the previous episode, Noel said that she was adopted by the Vermilions five years uh, prior to the events of Calamity Trigger, which would make it the year twenty one ninety four, if memory serves, unless uh, it's playing tricks on me. And prior to that, she doesn't really remember anything before being adopted by the Vermilions. But that flashback uh, is an indicator of something else. And uh, ominously enough, five years ago was when that catastrophe during the uh, story's introduction actually took place, the devastation of the uh, secret laboratory supposedly being run by Sector 7. And of course, if you were paying attention, you will have noticed that in the fiery ruins of that laboratory after the devastation hit, there was a lone girl standing there, wearing a, uh, a ruined white dress with blonde hair, green eyes, and a, uh, and a scar on which looked kind of like a symbol on her uh, solar plexus. A girl who looked eerily like Noel Vermillion, and that is because that little girl was Noel Vermillion. Which basically means that uh, Noel didn't just inherit the Vermillion's family name, but she was actually given the name Noel by the Vermilions themselves, when they took her in. Which, uh... is only going to add to, uh... Noelle's confused state, it seems. And as Noelle stands before Nu, a familiarly strange phenomena is taking place. I've seen this somewhere. Indeed. And you will have actually noticed a number, um, a number in the, uh, during that flashback sequence. A number that read Mu-12. Given the fact that uh, this Murakumo unit is before us is Nu-13, 
and also uh, remembering the fact that the lead scientist in that other uh, research facility said that the uh, something about a uh, subject 11 there is uh yeah and given Ragnar the blood edge is uh, one man war against the inner well there are possibly more Murakumo units some where and once again uh Noel's identity as Noel Vermillion is uh, momentarily lost. Target confirmed. Target confirmed. Because believe it or not, Noel Vermillion is Mu Twelve. Scanning complete. IFF determined. Processing. Target identified as me which is exactly why new 13 uh, identifies Noel Vermillion as herself which is uh, fairly ominous identification identical so the Murakuma units are surprisingly identical activate termination protocol and yet, there must be something in their functionality that uh, seemingly states that only one Murakumo unit can be activated at any given time. Because, unfortunately, for some reason, Murakumo units are driven to destroy each other in order to erase the other's existence. Why this uh, functionality exists, I couldn't even begin to tell you. But it's Noel Vermillion, aka Mu-12, against the Murakumo unit Nu-13. And this time we're taking no prisoners and drawing no quarters. This time we reach the for the truth. Is turning. Something I should mention is that in this battle, New 13 is unlimited. That means she has access to uh, her entire arsenal of moves, and on that basis, uh, some of her standard attacks will actually do different uh, things more powerfully as well. Can't exactly demonstrate what they are, and I hope I don't have to in this episode, because unlimited characters can be obnoxious to fight against. <laughs> I will not let you uh, cheat me out first by having you spam all those swords out of thin air in 13. But uh, she's probably going to. See if I can finish this with Fenrir. Let's do this. Oh well. Please, Nemesis Stabilizer. Let's get in there. And hey hey, we actually finished and we didn't take damage whatsoever. Behold the power of determination, that was a perfect victory. A flawless victory. And yet it accounts for nothing. And yet, 
things have uh, things have changed. I'm I'm back in the room. The same white room. Uh, sorry, I said white womb for a second there. I'm, who am I trying to be, Elmer Fudd? I'm in the. I'm back in the white room that we saw uh, at the beginning of Noel's story. Whether or not this room existed uh, before or after the tragedy five years ago remains to be seen. The same room I've been in so many times before. The white room, not womb. I look around, but I still don't know why I'm here, or what I'm supposed to do, or anything. I never know anything. Never. But, wait, something's different. The person standing in front of me speaks for the first time. Look at that. She points to a, toward a giant mirror. I can see myself in it. And that voice is familiar, as is that silhouette, because that is Rachel Alucard. She apparently is involved in a lot of things in the world of Blaze Blue. I had no idea there was something like that this in here. I I can't turn away. At first, I assumed it was me. Or the person in the mirror. It's someone else. It's not me. But I knew them once. Because Noelle has uh, blonde hair and green eyes, and she's dressed in a hospital, hospital gown. But the girl displayed in the mirror does not have the same char well, characteristics as Noelle. Similar, but not the same. Because this girl's hair is silver, and her eyes are red should be an indication as to who that girl is on the opposite side. I knew them a very long time ago, before I lost my memories. A long, long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, no, no, it's that reference was too easy, too easy to make. I apologize. Before I was born. But I can't remember them anymore. So did this happen before or after the tragedy, I wonder? You're not me. Who are you? Yes, indeed. The girl on the uh, other side of the looking glass is none other than New Thirteen. The person in the mirror asks me, but I don't know the answer. I can't remember. 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 Who is she? And... More importantly, who am I? And that is the true end of Noel's story, Lost Child. Although I have uh, mildly spoiled things, then again, uh, it was in flashback. But then again, uh, Noel herself uh, isn't uh, fully aware or cognizant of that fact. But, um, that is the end of Noelle's story, once and for all. The true ending of Lost Child. So, that is it for this episode of Let's Play Blaze Blue Calamity Trigger. 
When we return, we shall move on to the story of uh, everyone's favorite resident vampire, Rachel Alucard, and see where exactly she fits into the grand scheme of things. As always, adventurers, until next we meet.